whatever looks like a case that the enemy has been using against you that case is sorted now before this day is over it is evident that your captivity is torn God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedepo to preach the word of faith liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet shall we lift our hands to heaven one more time and give god thanks appreciate him and glorify his name is worthy of all praise of all glory of all honor father we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we are before you again this morning. We thank you for all that you showed us in the first and the second word sessions. We are set again for your word. Speak to us, and by it let every one of us be changed. We give you all the praise and all the glory. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say loud, Amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please, you may be seated in his presence. Shiloh 2018. And I take dominion. This morning we are going to be going further in God's word as we look into the subject unveiling the dominion power of wisdom. Unveiling. The dominion power of wisdom. According to scriptures, we are made to understand that every child of God is ordained by God a child of dominion. In Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27, the Bible makes us understand there, speaking very clearly. It tells us there that and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So everyone that is child of God, called to be a saint, is ordained by God as a seed of dominion. It's also important for us to recognize that in Christ by redemption, we are made to understand that we are seated far above all forces that may seek to dominate or subject others. Ephesians 2 verse 5 and 6, the Bible tells us in verse 6 in particular, it says there that we are seated together with him in heavenly places. And chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 tells us where that is, far above all principalities and powers. It means that everyone that is a child of God that is in Christ Jesus is ordained to be seated in dominion. And by the encounters we are having upon this mountain, by the time you are emerging from Shiloh 2018, you shall be seated in dominion. In Psalm 110, beginning from verse 1, he said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That will be somebody's experience here. <laughs> By the time you are emerging from this mountain of Shiloh 2018, you shall be seated in dominion. <laughs> you believe me, say louder, Amen. And the good news according to scripture is that this sitting in dominion is not relegated to any group of people. In the book of Revelations 5 verse 9 and 10, this is how the scripture puts it. It says there to us that he has redeemed us from all kindred, from every tongue, from all people, from all nations. And he has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth your tribe notwithstanding your language notwithstanding your nation notwithstanding he has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth that shall be your experience in the name of jesus <laughs> however we understand that this dominion 
while it is provided for all that are saved, it is not necessarily the experience of all. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews 2, beginning from verse 8, it tells us there that he said, He has put all things under his feet and put in subjection all things and left nothing that was not put under. He said, but in the big part of that verse, he said, but now we see not yet all things put under him. He has already made the provision, but it is not yet manifesting in the reality of many individuals. And why is that so? Because there are vital scriptural conditions for dominion to be appropriately exhibited. And that is what God has been taking us through since we arrived at Shiloh, opening it to us seal by seal. And I believe God that this morning, yet another seal shall be opened to us again. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. amen. One of the vital covenant requirements for dominion and rulership is wisdom. In Proverbs 8, verse 15 and 16, the Bible tells us there, it says there that by me, speaking of wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. It said in verse 16, by me, Princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. So anyone that will be in rulership or in dominion requires this virtue of wisdom. All through the scriptures, we are made to see that wisdom is the vital force required for enthronement. Now, from scripture, we also identify that there are four types of wisdom. James chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. The Bible tells us that this wisdom is said, James 3 verse 15 to 17. It tells us that this wisdom is said, descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And then goes on to tell us that there is a wisdom that comes from above. So from this scripture we have four categories. Number one is what the Bible referred to as earthly wisdom. And earthly wisdom refers to common sense. It is what you don't have to struggle to get. A child is born and that child knows what to do with food. Food is given to the child and he puts food in the mouth. It is not something he went to school to get. He is just born with it. It is common sense and can only give birth to common results. But second category of wisdom we have is what the scripture called there as sensual or we can call it intellectual wisdom. This is the product of rigorous engagement in the process of learning. Rigorous engagement in the process of learning. That is intellectual or sensual wisdom. Number three dimension the scripture called there is devilish or diabolical wisdom. Devilish or diabolical wisdom. And this is where you find individuals seeking to rise by the manipulations of hell. Devilish or diabolical wisdom. But then the scripture tells us, fourthly, that there is the wisdom that comes from above. That is the heavenly dimension of wisdom. And whatsoever is from above is above all. Today, as you are upon this mountain of Shiloh, both here in Canaan land and across all the viewing centers of the earth and anyone connected by any other means, Upon this mountain, the wisdom that comes from above shall be deposited afresh upon you. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Now, what is this wisdom from above? What do we refer to as the wisdom that comes from above? In the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, this is how the Bible puts it. It said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, who built his house upon the rock. 
And no matter what came, the house remained standing because it was founded upon the rock. He said, but he that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And then when the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon the house, it fell and great was the fall of it. From this scripture, we have a clear definition of wisdom and foolishness. Who is a wise man? A wise man is the one that hears what God says and does it. Wisdom is simply operating by divine instruction. Applying every word that comes from God. If you hear many of the testimonies we have been hearing upon this mountain, you hear people say that I was obeying every instruction that was proceeding from the altar. When a man hears from God and does what God says, that individual is operating in wisdom. So it is simply putting God's word to work that we refer to as wisdom. The psalmist said in Psalm 119 and verse 105, he said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and it is a light unto my path. In other words, your word is what is defining the steps that I take. Every time you find a man that is committed to obeying divine instruction, you have found a man that is operating by divine wisdom. God's servant has put it this way. He said, wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Wisdom is knowing what to say and saying it. Wisdom is knowing where to go and going there. It is all about the application of whatever God has instructed. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. And when we look at scriptures, we have all kinds of examples painted for us of individuals that operated by divine wisdom. We look at a few examples here in scriptures and you will see the enthronement power of wisdom. Because there is somebody that God will enthrone by wisdom upon this mountain in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us concerning the man called Joseph. In the book of Genesis 41, we are told concerning Joseph, verse 38 down to verse 44. It says there that when he appeared before Pharaoh and provided a solution to the situation that was facing the nation. He said, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet as and as wise as you are. He said, thou shalt be over my house. You can't be wise and be under. Thou shalt be over my house. And according to thy word shall my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. In other words, this is a king saying, Because I see wisdom in you, I surrender the kingdom to you. I will keep the seat, the seat but you keep the rulership. You can operate divine wisdom and not end up enthroned. Please hear this and hear it very well. You don't need to elect a wise man. Wisdom selects him. The wisdom of God makes you the selection without election. You find yourself positioned in the place of enthronement on the basis of wisdom. You see, wisdom makes you to be needed, not just to be tolerated. There are many people who are tolerated. There are others who are needed. Wisdom makes you to be needed. Here comes a man called Joseph. The man who was in the prison. The man who was relegated to the back. But suddenly when wisdom showed up, what happened? They said, we need you. Where can we find a man like this? A man who carries the wisdom of God. He said, you shall be over my house. I see wisdom putting you over in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, Amen. I said, I see wisdom putting you over in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I see the wisdom of God putting you over in the name of Jesus. Amen. This man came with wisdom and suddenly he was needed. He was required. He became the treasure of the kingdom. Can you imagine? Look at the story of Joseph. 
and you find a man who came into Egypt as a slave. You find a slave who was demoted into the prison. He came in as a slave and then was demoted to being a prisoner. And then before the king was promoted to becoming the prime minister. All of that on the basis of wisdom. It doesn't matter how low a man is. Wisdom will always take him to the top. It doesn't matter how low a man is. It doesn't matter how relegated a man is. The moment the wisdom of God rests upon the life of such a person, it promotes him to the top. I see that becoming your experience. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. The second example we have is the example of the man called Daniel. In the scripture, we are made to understand how that God gave wisdom and understanding to Daniel and his friends. Daniel chapter 1, we see that from verse 17 to 20. They were given wisdom. As for these four, God gave them knowledge and gave them skill and gave them wisdom. So Daniel was given the wisdom of God. And what was the effect of that wisdom? We are made to understand that Daniel operated in Babylon for minimum of 65 years under four different kings, four different regimes. Kings were changing, but wisdom was remaining. You continue to remain relevant on the basis of wisdom. The moment the wisdom of God is at work in the life of a man, that individual remains in demand. He remains in demand. Put it this way. The power of wisdom is continuous. When a man is put in power by wisdom, that reign of that man is continuous. Daniel was a man who got into Babylon as a slave, as a war captive, a prisoner of war, but yet became the ruler of the land on the basis of wisdom. You check it and you discover that this man remained relevant. When kings come, the the pattern of, you know, the monarchy is that when a king comes to take over a kingdom from another person, he clears out all of the officers. But yet, no matter who came, Daniel remained. People were changing power, but he was remaining in power by wisdom. Why? By wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. I see the wisdom of God coming afresh upon you today in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3, we see a picture there concerning Daniel. This man, we are told that he said he pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes that should be over the entire kingdom. He said, and over these he put three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first. And the prince, that the princes should give account and that he should not have any damage. And verse 3, the Bible tells us, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king taught To set him above the whole realm. You see, there is something about wisdom that every time a throne opens, you are the thought that comes. When Joseph showed up, suddenly a throne was created in Egypt. When Daniel showed up, Darius began to consider this man should be ruling the nation. By reason of wisdom, rulership was cheaply handed over. I see many individuals here today that rulership in various domains will be handed over to you by wisdom. <laughs> Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. <laughs> Number three example we look at is the example of the man called Solomon. Now Solomon was a king, a man selected by God to rule over the people of Israel. But then wisdom, Solomon asked God for one thing. First Kings chapter 3 verse 3 down to verse 13. He asked God that he would grant unto him wisdom. What was the effect of wisdom in the life of Solomon? 
All you need to do is to check First Kings chapter 4 from verse 29 and see how wisdom made Solomon not only to be the ruler of Israel, but the Bible said from all the kings of the earth, they came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. He was ruling his nation and instructing other nations on the basis of wisdom. Did you notice that Solomon is the only king we have in Israel who nobody ever arose as a nation to fight? Why? You can't fight the person who gave you your strategy. You can't fight the one who gave you your solution. The person who gave you your answer can answer your confrontation. Solomon was a man to be feared by the wisdom of God. Every time you found individuals who rose up in anger concerning Solomon, nobody rose up and ran towards him to attack him. Everyone who rose up ran away from him because the wisdom of God had put a defense around him. From today, you will never suffer any losses again. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. There is a way when you are operating in the dimension of God's wisdom that your enemies begin to become afraid of you. They begin to fear you. Did you not hear the testimony of one of our sisters? How she shared, and it was shared here at the Faith Tabernacle. She said that she went to a place thinking it was for a job interview and arrived at the place. And as she entered into the place, they gave her a drink to drink. And she took a man to unrub the, the drink and drank it. And then they began to look at her, expecting for some things to happen to her. Nothing was happening. They sent her to the top to see the man at the top of the building. And he said, well, who are you? Are you such and such person? He said, yes. And began to ask all manner of questions. He said, identify yourself. And she brought a choir ID card and presented it. And the man said, "Uh uh-uh. This man again? Why? They have found somebody that knew what to do with every situation. He knew what to do when found in any confrontation. This man again, okay, carry yourself and go. Gave her transport money to return. Why? A man of wisdom is a man of answers. A man of answers is a man to be feared. From today, your enemies will fear you. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said, from this day onwards, your enemies will fear you. You believe it, say louder, amen. Amen. Number four example is the example of Paul the Apostle. The Bible tells us concerning Paul the Apostle, he was the man who came last. He was the man who seemed to be relegated. Paul almost seemed to have naturally been a picture of misfortune. He was alive in the time of Christ, but never came in contact with Christ. When Christ departed and the church began, he became the enemy of the church. He was a man that seemed to be going in all the wrong directions. But look at the testimony of Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians 15. We begin to see Paul, you know, rehearsing his experience and his testimony. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning from verse 1 down to verse 10. You see Paul saying that I who had been a man that, you know, was injurious, I had been a man that was an enemy of Christ, I was the last I was the last. I was not even fit to be called an apostle. I was a man who was relegated. He said, yes, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, this grace was not in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Now, the man who came last became the first by wisdom. Look at it all through the scripture. You see Paul's imprint practically on the church. You can't talk the gospel without talking Paul the Apostle. He was a man who came the last, but yet wisdom projected him to be the first. Look at Peter's testimony of Paul, Second Peter 3 and verse 15. This is Peter speaking. Peter said concerning Paul, he said, An account of the long suffering of, of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him has written unto you. Look at verse 16. And he has written epistles and things that are hard to be understood. He was speaking from a depth of mysteries. The wisdom that was given unto him brought him to the forefront and to the limelight. 
He was a backbencher, but he was promoted to a front runner by wisdom. That is the power of wisdom. That is the power of wisdom. And I see that wisdom that promoted Paul, that wisdom from above, beginning to find practical expression in your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe me, say it louder, amen. amen. So we have seen the examples of men like Joseph, men like Daniel, men like Solomon, and men like Paul. And now God is determined that men like you and men like me will be listed among them. Amen. Somebody believe me, say it louder, amen. amen. Now quickly, how do we engage the wisdom of God for dominion? How do we engage the wisdom of God for dominion? How do I tap into God's order of wisdom in order to dominate? We look at a few things here very quickly this morning. Number one is engage the altar of prayer in faith. Engage the altar of prayer in faith. In the book of James chapter 1 verse 5 to 8, he said, If any man lacks wisdom, let him Ask of God that give it to how many? To all men liberally and obraded not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. He said, For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. And verse 8 tells us a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What is God saying here? Wisdom is available to those that ask in faith. You are seeking wisdom. All you need to do first is ask God for wisdom. Somebody may say, well, I've asked God for wisdom before. So if I already have wisdom, why should I ask again? Here's the, the, the way I put it. If you lack an answer in that area, you lack wisdom. And what do you do in that area? Ask God for it. He said, God will not refuse the man who asks him in faith. The moment you approach God in faith concerning any subject that you desire an answer, God has already guaranteed us responses. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. You look at the example of Solomon. What did Solomon do? In 1 Kings chapter 3, we saw it earlier, verse 3 down to verse 13. He asked God. God said, what is it that you want? He asked him, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. It is in prayer that Solomon contacted that wisdom. He asked of God. You and I have the same opportunity. We can ask of God. And God said he will give it to you like he gave it to Solomon. He will give it to you like he gave it to Daniel. He will give it to you like he gave it to Joseph. He will give it to you like he gave it unto the man, Paul the Apostle. I see you being listed among that in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> God's servant, the apostle over this commission has shared how that at the commencement of this ministry, the one thing he kept asking from God is, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. He kept seeking for the wisdom of God. Because behind every command of dominion and exploits is wisdom. Behind every command of dominion and exploits is wisdom. I see the wisdom of God coming afresh upon you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. Number two, be committed to searching and meditating on scriptures. Be committed to searching and meditating on scriptures. In Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, the Bible tells us there, it said, I'm from a child. Thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise. The word of God makes wise. You can't continue to take in God's word and not end up with wisdom. The wisdom of God is loaded in the word of God. The more we gain access to the depths of God's word, the more we gain access to the depths of God's wisdom. 
That is why the Bible makes us understand in Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 and verse 3. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In other words, is getting results from the instrumentality of the word of God. Our commitment to God's word gives us access to the wisdom of God. Shout hallelujah. In Psalm 119, verse 97 to 100, we see the testimony of David rehearsed there in scriptures. He said there, oh how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy combined commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. He said thou through thy commandments, he said I have more understanding than my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I have more wisdom than the ancient. He said because I keep thy precepts. You are talking about a man that ended up in wisdom by committing himself to the study and meditation of scriptures. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. What does that mean? If we want to go higher in wisdom, we must get deeper in revelation. Get deeper in revelation. Commit yourself to thinking scriptures. Commit yourself to thinking scriptures. Paul speaking in Philippians 4 said in verse 8. He said whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. If there be any praise. Think on these things. When you look at all the qualifications that Paul listed in that verse. The only thing that fits it all is the word of God. What was Paul saying? Think on God's word. Think on God's word. Paul speaking to Timothy said to him, he said now, meditate on these things and give yourself wholly unto them and your profiting will appear unto all. So we must commit ourselves to meditating on God's word, to thinking scriptures, to reading scriptures, to studying scriptures. It is the light that you gather from his word that will help to guide your life on the earth. The light you gather from his word. So in order to end up operating the wisdom of God, you and I must be addicted to the study and meditation of scripture. Shout hallelujah. Number three, engage the help of the Holy Spirit. Engage the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 and verse 3, speaking of the Holy Spirit, we are told there that there are seven dimensions of his operation. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge, and spirit of the fear of the Lord. And all of this is to make him of quick understanding. So the Holy Spirit is also referred to as the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. And you and I have the capacity to engage him to get solutions to the challenges of life. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Paul speaking there said, he said, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. So there is an oppression of the Holy Spirit referred to as the spirit of wisdom. You can tap into it. You call upon the Holy Ghost. You engage him on the altar of prayer. And he begins to breathe solutions into you. I see that becoming somebody's experience here. During the construction of the faith tabernacle, there was a situation for which God's servant's attention was called. Suddenly was told they needed to bring a machinery into the building. And the only way that the engineers thought that that machine could be brought in because of the size was that they had to break, you know, part of the building because it was too high, as it were, to enter. And God said, wait a minute. And got there and just began to breathe in the Holy Ghost. And suddenly, 
what the engineers were struggling with, he said, how high is that tire? They told him the height. How high are you looking? What is the clearance you're looking for? They told him the clearance. The clearance you're looking for is lower than the size of the tire. Deflate the tire. Pull it in. Inflate it. Do your work. Deflate it again. Pull it out. And reinflate it again. You see, the Holy Ghost is a fountain of answers. Their education did not provide the solution. But there is an inspiration that cometh from above, from above. There is an answer where no man has an answer. Because the Bible said that, that there is no temptation that has taken you but such as is common. God is faithful. In every temptation there is a way of escape. Shout hallelujah. I see the Holy Ghost breathing answers into you in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. amen. Number four. Engage the ministry of God ordained teachers. Engage the ministry of your God ordained teachers. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and verse 21, it said there, it said that although the Lord give thee the bread of affliction and the water of the bread, bread of adversity and water of affliction, he said, yet your teachers will not be removed again into the corner. He said, for your eyes will see your teachers. And when you see your teachers, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. The more committed you are, like we heard in the teaching on followership, the more you gain access to directions and instructions from God. Commit yourself to your God-ordained teacher. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. We are told there concerning Uzziah, this man became great because he was under the instruction of Zechariah. I see the greatness that God has put inside of you finding expression in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, number five, confront situations with the consciousness of the mind of Christ at work in you. Confront situations with the consciousness of the mind of Christ at work in you. First Corinthians 2 6, he said, But you have the mind of Christ. That means that no matter what you are facing, there is an answer, there is a way out. Confront situations with the consciousness that you carry the mind of Christ in you. You shall never again be left confused in any situation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is God saying? Wherever you find yourself, keep reminding yourself, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I carry a solution within me. I have the mind of Christ. I have an answer inside of me. I have the mind of Christ. There is a way out of this situation. Jesus was never cornered without an answer. Everywhere they found him, an answer was flowing. Wherever they find you from today, answers will be flowing through you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud, Amen. In your seated position right now, lift up your hand before the Lord and call upon him. Lord, I've heard your word. Grant me wisdom. He said, does any man lack wisdom? Let him ask of God. Lord, grant me your wisdom. Grant me your wisdom. Grant me your wisdom. From this day onward, I must never be left without an answer. Thank you, Father, for it. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Welcome to your realm of wisdom. Welcome to your realm of answers in Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big hand. just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedepo, 21688 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Call 774-7546, 774-7547-774-7548. And best of all, come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land, Kilometer 10, Idiroko Road, Otta, 